Welcome back to the City Said. I am, of course, Josh. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the bees and what's been going on with them. One of the coolest things about having them right here behind the greenhouse, it's actually hard to see because of the shadow, but it's like an observation room in here. I can actually come in here and check on these bees and just watch them for hours on end. It's really nice. Well, until I get like cooked in here. <laughs> so some of the things that happened this year was we had some really late cold nights. And I had a few mornings where I woke up and I came out here and I was very, very worried because of the... <laughs> There's one of our friends right now. And I was a little bit worried because the bees were out front just kind of dying and dying. There's like every day there was a, a new pile and it was very worrisome for me as a brand new beekeeper. And then, of course, the world learned about murder hornets. And then probably the toughest thing was that two weeks ago, my bees swarmed on me. And they went right up to the top of this tree back here. Quite a ways, I couldn't get to them. Uh, I just didn't have an extension ladder that I could reach there. They weren't in a very accessible place for me. And by the time I got equipment, because I didn't have enough boxes to try to even catch a swarm, they bolted, took off, and left me high and dry. Now I say high and dry, but obviously they try to make new cells in there for queens because they want to requeen the hive and then half of them leave. So we lost half our hive, not all of it, quite a bit of it more than I would definitely want to and it was a little bit discouraging for me The good news is the bees that we do have here are still working really hard as they're all the way up in that next box now. So it's so darn hard I knew I wasn't getting any work done in the garden this afternoon, especially after all that heavy lifting this morning and strapping into that bee suit. So we came down to the park to hang out for a little bit. Figure I'll relax while they run off and, you know, burn off a ton of energy during that sun. We'll sleep really good tonight. There's right frosting on this one. Fire! There's a fire! You are? Mm -hmm. Here comes Wizard of Oz. I, I know how to go up there. And I can fall up there. <laughs> Ta da! Yeah. So we're walking back from the park and check it out, guys. This is one of our secret stash trees right here, service berry. We came over here and tried to harvest a bunch of berries. What do you think? You excited about getting some service berries? Yeah, because mom can make service berry and lemon muffins. Ooh, yeah. So there's actually like a whole row of them here. There's two down here and then There's actually three more serviceberry trees right down here. I don't want to show you too much. You guys will come steal my location. But check it out. You can see them right here. That's a little serviceberry. They're like blueberries. And actually, if you guys are into urban foraging at all, I'll have you know that most cities plant a lot of these serviceberries because they're one of the first trees to flower in the spring, especially up here by us. And they bear these little fruits that taste a lot like blueberries. Uh, the only thing is you got to really fight the birds for them. Like, fight them. Like, you... They'll dive bomb you when you're picking berries off these trees. They absolutely love them, but what a great treat. And they are just in every city. Like I see them all over this 
and just our city alone we see quite a few of them and there is five there's six of them right here in this uh road on this little road here so we came over here what a couple years ago we picked a whole ton of them and uh we'll come back this year and pick a bunch more until ours are ready and then we'll have our own to pick we'll probably still come get these <laughs> So if you look at these trees this year too, man, they are super loaded with uh, fruit. I'm really, really excited about the uh, the whole berry season. Looks great. Seeing how much berries are on these, and I know our mulberries are loaded up. It's gonna be a good berry year. I actually spent most of the morning out here planting. We're kind of bouncing back from a little bit of a groundhog pressure we had, but to see we got a lot of stuff actually going in, looking actually pretty decent. And some radishes I can actually start pulling. Might have a few of those for dinner tonight. And I'm just trying to get this, some of this garden cleaned up and just back into a good work in order. So my brother came by earlier and my brother is kind of like my mentor in the beekeeping world. A lot of things have been going on so he hasn't been able to be here to help me a few, on a few of these inspections. So today we got to go in there and kind of really look at it, see everything that was going on with the hive. And also, I dropped off my next little project here. <laughs> the kids are going to have a mega fort. <laughs> So when we went in there, what we did see was a lot of queen cells at the bottom, swarm cells, uh, maybe things I missed. I don't know the original time when I, right before it kind of swarmed, like I did an, uh, an examination in there. What do you guys call it? <laughs> an examination. What is this, some kind of court of law? Uh, inspection. <laughs> I did an inspection, I didn't see, uh, I mean, I, I seen some build off, but I guess I didn't recognize it as a queen cell or a swarm cell. But there were a few, and we saw some that were actually open. So we know that the queen came out at one point in time, and we didn't see her in there. There was no eggs. There was a little bit of larvae, but that could, you know, could be 21. That could be from the original queen a few weeks ago. So kind of disappointing to see the cells open and no eggs laid, uh, and we couldn't find the queen. So there's a good chance. Actually, I think it's pretty known that the queen left, and she never made it back. And I'll. Queens go out, they go on a big maiden flight, right? And then they come back and your hive takes off again. Uh, if they don't make it back, that's a different story. So what we do have is another queen cell in there that is capped. And we're gonna check in a couple more weeks and see if that one hatches out. And hopefully uh, she comes back mated and we get this hive going again. So if she doesn't make it back, if we check in two weeks and there's no eggs or anything in there, then we have to decide what we're gonna do. We're either gonna kind of off this hive because it'll become a wild hive and we, we can't really do that or we're gonna have to go to an outside source and get a queen and then try to fit her into there and hopefully the hive will take her if not who knows we could go through queens uh, a whole bunch of them I guess <laughs> so a lot of decisions are gonna be have to made but we're gonna have to wait another two weeks before we do that and uh, we're gonna do another exam in examination I keep saying it we'll do another inspection in two weeks and we'll uh, see what's going on then but I'm very nervous, you know, as our first year beekeeper, it just makes me very nervous. I knew we were going to have things, we are going to have setbacks, things weren't going to go right. I knew that was going to happen. Uh, just hope it was a little bit better than what it is right now. But it is what it is. I can't go back and fix it. You know, it's it's already happened and done. So we just got to keep moving forward and working from here and learning. And we're learning a lot, you know. I really learned a lot about the uh, swarm cells and queen cells today from my brother and like what to really look for on them. Uh, how sometimes they can eat out the side of them, not the bottom, where you would think they would come out. So I learned a lot. We actually saw some uh, brood actually hatching while we were in there, eating a little paperweight. It was coming out. So there's a lot of brood in there, and they have moved up into that second box, and they're working on that second box of uh, pulling out, drawing out comb, and putting stuff in there. So I feel like it's still going pretty decent. It's all a matter of if we get a queen for this hive and get it back in a uh, work in order because without a queen the hive is really uh, going to become you know <laughs> not the best situation so hopefully fingers crossed we get a queen that lands uh, you know is born she comes out she goes on a good maiden flight comes back and she takes over and we can continue on now if we do have that happen it looks like we won't have a normal honey harvest uh, when normal people would like July for our area uh, which is 6A. 
<laughs> so our our harvest will end up being later in like August. So it'll be a little different, a little off, and we might not get as much as if everything would have went smoothly. But we're still working for it. We're still going forward with it. I, I feel a lot better after today. At least I know you know the the hive is doing what it's supposed to be doing and trying to get itself a new queen. Let's just hope it all happens. <laughs> so I feel like that's going to be a good wrap up. <laughs> Remember, guys, be bold and grow bold. And as always, whoa, we'll be right back in the next video. <laughs> that one bee just keeps flying in here and like wants to do damage to me. I don't know what it is, man. It keeps flying right at my face. Ah. <laughs>